Oh, lovey. I'm guessing that you probably already know what this is. However, sometimes I know that I have to spell things out. Well, I write you letters all the time. And I figured this time I would do something special for you. You feel more moved when you get a motivational video or when you watch spoken word poetry or when you watch music videos. So I wrote this for you. It's called Marriage Armor. I can't wait till our first dance as husband and wife. This new stage in life characterized by the song that's been on rewind playing over and over in my mind. Love is a peace in the middle of a war. If we try to leave, may God send angels to guard the door. We can't do this on our own. Sin and pride get in the way. But we have the God of angel armies always by our side. He alone can save the day. If God has angel armies prepared to protect us, then I'm committed fully to suiting up without a fuss to fight alongside you. Ephesians 6 talks about putting on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, I will put on every piece of God's armor so that we will be able to resist the enemy in times of evil. Every morning, I commit to putting on the belt of truth. I'm not talking about a WWE belt that comes with a title and an ego, but a belt of safety and protection when you are on the go that is a perfect fit. Truth spoken with gentleness through eyes of acceptance so that you feel the security that allows you to come to me and know that I'll love you no matter what. The breastplate of righteousness will be my next piece of armor. I'll throw it on over my shoulders and hook the straps real tight around my heart. I'll make sure to help you strap yours too. This breastplate protects those things which allow us life during the battle of our lives. And on the days when you feel weak or have a chink in your armor, I will use my lungs to fill your heart with love and compassion. I'll then bend down and make sure my shoelaces are tied securely because these shoes represent our foundation. The foundation made of peace. You know, the peace of God that, un that transcends all understanding. This will give us the ability to step out in battle without worrying where we place our feet. Our step can be so sure because as long as we acknowledge him, he will make all of our paths straight. I will do my best daily to remind you of these words so you don't have to carry the weight alone. We are not far from beginning this new stage in life together. A time when we will have to weather the storms of flaming arrows flung by the enemy. During those showers of virtual arrows raining down on us, we will have to hook our shields and hold them up, remembering that it is the Lord who reigns in our lives. These shields are such a clear representation of our faith. If we let our faith in God's sovereignty and goodness slip, Satan attacks, always attacking where we are weakest. Let's promise today to always fight against those attacks side by side instead of being the ones who start them. In times of struggle, we need to remember who we are fighting for and against. Remember, faith enables us to overcome. Faith justifies us, and faith allows us to shield each other in times of danger. Our shields can only be effective if we raise them up. So I will do my best daily to be prepared by encouraging you to stay in the word, be persistent, and always ready for an attack. I will then grab my last piece of armor, the helmet, the helmet of salvation. I have no doubt we cannot go without this protection against the deadly and damaging blows to our head. Blows can consist of anything that may defile our mind and introduce impurity. Blows like the temptation to grant another woman access to your heart. Blows like the desire in me to seek out another man for advice. I pray our helmets are so strong 
and our vision so sure that no seed of impurity can ever take root. And yet, if a spark of impurity creeps in, I pray the grace of God's love through us can extinguish even the greatest flame. In a world where nothing is permanent, the only thing we can rely on is God for our salvation. Finally, it's time for us to play offense in our marriage. Not just be reactive, but proactive, one step ahead of the enemy. So I'll pick up my sword, which is able to cut between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow, and expose our inmost thoughts and desires. There's no need to sharpen this sword, because this is the sword of the spirit and has already conquered the world. However, we need to sharpen our minds to wield this sword against spiritual attack. We need to conquer the war raging in our mind, taking captive every thought that does not align with God's will for us. We then can deflect any attack with God's word, just like Jesus did on the mountain. Away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So here we go, babe. Remember this. Marriage is simply two imperfect people who refuse to give up on each other. Actually, scratch that. Marriage is two imperfect people who with God's help and marriage armor refuse to give up on each other. I'm suited up for battle and God willing will never leave your side.